gather around children for the message that I have for you about uh, the scriptures and what Jesus has to say to us today. I'm going to pretend like you're sitting in the front row and we are social distanced, so maybe I can just take my mask down for a little bit. So why do we wear masks right now? It's not that I'm the masked bandit, the masked pastor, but it's because we are trying to protect you and others from germs and from the coronavirus specifically. So I wear a mask not because it's just a law or a rule. I wear the mask because I care about you and I care about others. Now, what does that have to do with the Bible? Well, Jesus teaches us that we are to care about others. We're to protect one another. We are to obey the rules and laws called the Ten Commandments, which are also about not hurting others. Don't steal, don't kill, don't lie. Those rules are all based on the same thought, to be kind and to be loving to one another. And that's a beautiful word to plant in your hearts. Today's scripture is about from the Gospel of Matthew, and it's about a farmer who went out and planted all these seeds absolutely everywhere. And Jesus said God's like, like planting seeds wherever he can throw that seed. It's so joyous. And those seeds are the word of God. And not Every seed turns into a beautiful plant. Some seeds dry up in the heat. Others get choked by weeds. Other seeds blossom and grow. Well, God's word, God's laws, are planted in our hearts. And when we receive them and we keep on learning every year of our life about what it means to love God and to love our neighbor as ourself, we grow into beautiful people who are kind and loving and wear masks if needed to protect one another. So refocus. No, no, not you, Jim. <laughs> I think the lens, the camera's just fine. No, it's you. It's time to refocus or focus. What do I mean by that? Well, I don't know. Let's just think. Listen to the news long enough and you will hear the word refocus a lot this week. Conversations have been focused on the education of our children, the possibility of reopening schools, specifically those how do we do this conversations. How do we clean the rooms? How do we pay for teachers? How do we uh, keep our children safe? How do we social distance? How do we mask our children? Parents have experienced teaching their own children at home long enough. And several interviews on the radio have revealed a new appreciation for teachers at every level. Parents now understand what those teachers go through. Even though remote learning and distance learning has been helpful for some kids, there are many who need more socialization and face-to-face -face education. So focus, the focus is on our children right now. Well, we certainly have a whole list of issues that we could focus on. So the question is, what is our highest priority? Health, education, socialization, community, helping working parents, financial recovery and stability, feeding and sheltering the growing number of out-of-work people and people who are out of money, supporting small businesses and bankrupt institutions. Maybe the focus is, is still in your community on police reform. And what about mental and emotional programs for those who are wearing down and are disturbed uh, spiritually as well as physically. The list is like a whirlpool of worries, and it can and does overwhelm us. 
So we need to stop for a moment. We need to pause. We need to refocus on matters of the Spirit. We need to dig deep into the spiritual seeds of our, our traditions and grab onto the invisible goodness and words of wisdom of God. And that's what we're doing today. So let's just start with the gospel. Jesus tells the parable of the generous farmer who indiscriminately throws out seeds. He's joyous in this task. He tosses those seeds on unprepared and rocky ground as well as fertile soil. This farmer has not plowed the field, nor watered it, nor fertilized it. He has not done the back-breaking work of picking rocks or digging rows. Just like a jester, the Reverend John Stevens says, he just throws those seeds out without judgment. So it is. Jesus instructs this large crowd gathered outside to hear his words, his spiritual guidance. So it is with the kingdom of God, he tells them. It was that day as Jesus planted seeds of faith in the hearts of everyone who had ears to hear that he made this gospel come alive. For he threw those seeds out into people's hearts and who knows what became of their spirit, their lives, their souls. The Gospel according to Matthew interprets the parable of the sower not so much as we focus on the generosity of God, but on the people and the reasons why those seeds of faith didn't take or did. So the first seed, seeds that fell were on people who did hear the word but didn't take it in. That the word just lies on the surface like a seed that doesn't penetrate the soil. And then there were some people who were like seeds that just started to sprout a little bit. Like people who get excited the first time they hear about God's word, God's grace, God's love. But that joy doesn't last in some people. When trouble occurs, they blame God. Someone dies in the family, they blame God. See, this is what happens when I join the church. Yeah, things go wrong in my life. But that faith hasn't taken any root, and it will not endure. And the third kind of situation, the third kind of people that receive the message of uh, God's goodness and grace, this is the person who hears the kingdom news and weeds of worry and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard and nothing comes of it. That's from the message. The last type of person is the one who hears the word receives it, understands it, takes it in, um, lives his or her life by those words, and bears fruit 100-fold, 60-fold, 30-fold. That's the person I want to be in the kingdom of God on earth, right? The bottom line to this gospel lesson is listen to God's word, receive it, take it into your heart, live it, be a plant in God's community garden. Flourish in your own way, but also in God's generosity. Focus on what God is telling you today. Um, maybe you're looking at the slides on this particular um, YouTube, and uh, they show you, you know, God's generosity and, and beauty in people and in creatures, in, uh, in the creation around us. Focus on what God is uh, showing you and telling you with your encounters with individuals on the street, on the phone, on the Zoom, in person, on the telephone. And then spend time with the scriptures yourself and receive the word of God, the kingdom words, the kingdom's uh, gospel lesson to you. And then when the craziness of your life 
just brings you down and threatens to suck you into some dark vortex, refocus. Refocus on God's spirit, on God's nourishment, on God's encouragement, and God's hope in Jesus Christ. You've got this. If you have taken in the seeds of God's word and Christ into your heart, you can survive even this craziness. Focus. Romans 8, 1 through 11 begins with this very powerful statement. There is therefore no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. One last example. <clears throat> Remember the little um, example of living stones and those little tiny pebbles I showed you a couple of months ago. Uh, they, were, they were pebbles that bloomed with flowers in them. It was, they're called living stones or lithrops. Well, I sent away for those seeds and they arrived a couple months later in an envelope addressed uh, to me and, had, and the return address was Serbia or Croatia. These seeds are so small, they're almost invisible. And they are going to produce, I hope, lovely little pebble-looking um, plants with flowers coming out of them. But as I was reading the instruction, it said, please scatter these seeds in a certain kind of light soil and sand. And I thought, oh my goodness, I can hardly see these seeds. So it is with God's word. God's seed is often imperceptible and invisible. God's love for us is invisible, but boy, what a difference it makes in our lives. May we all focus on the spiritual gifts we have received and share the words of the gospel with whoever we meet and wherever we are. Amen.